Hello and welcome to our Holy Week Church at Home. This is on Holy Week, Monday of Holy Week, and we will be using the, for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week, we will be using the Book of Alternative Services. So if you have one at home, please feel free to follow along. We will be getting today's worship. Sorry, I'm juggling books here. We'll be beginning today's worship using the introductory response, which can be found on page after the canticles on page 98 we will using the introductory response the cross number five the cross christ became obedient unto death for us even death upon a cross he was pierced for our sins bruised for no fault but ours his punishment has won our peace and by his wounds we are healed Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. Amen. And our, the morning prayer continues on page 48, 49. We say together the Venite, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Christ became obedient unto death. Oh, come, let us worship. And the first reading for today, the reading is taken from the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this day is Psalm 36, verses 5 to 10, is that 5 to 10, and it can be found on page 348 in the Book of Alternative Services, verses 30, Psalm 36, verses 5 to 10, and we'll say this together, and then we will share in the psalm prayer. Your love, O Lord, teaches, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds, your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. 
for with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. God of justice and of mercy, open the eyes of sinners that they may see the light of your truth, know the power of your love, and share in the bounty of your heavenly table. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The second lesson today is taken from the letter to the Hebrews, which can be found toward the back of your, toward the end of your Bible, here before 1 Peter. Hebrews chapter 9, chapter 9, verses 11 to 15. 11 to 15, Hebrews chapter 9. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel for today is John, the gospel of John, chapter 12. John chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the, of the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well. Since it was not on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. A week ago Sunday, we heard that gospel without the last two verses, about Mary anointing Jesus' feet. So I don't want to talk about that. But I want to talk about the, the Pharisees and everybody being scared of Lazarus and what Jesus has done, had done because people were coming to Jesus, were believing in him because of what they had seen, that Lazarus had been brought back from the dead. I remember, oh, 100 years ago, um, when I was in... I wasn't in seminary yet. I was in my undergraduate degree and I wasn't present for church, but I heard about it. And uh, we had my, my home church of St. George's in London had, um, had a student named Bob. He went on to become a monk, Brother Patrick, but Bob Whiteford was preaching and he was preaching this passage about La uh, the passage about Lazarus being dead and Jesus calls him out of the tomb. And, he talks about how after four days he came out of the tomb and they had unwind him from all of the, the grave clothes. And you sort of imagine a mummy, you know, the old 70s movies of a mummy coming forward all wrapped in toilet paper. And he talked about this, this sense of sense, like what Lazarus would smell like after, seven, after four days of being dead. That's pretty bad. Um, I've done my fair share of funerals before and... When a body is going to be cremated, 
Um, they often don't do the things to it that would normally be done, you know, for a visitation, things like that. And occasionally the, 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 the odor of the body becomes something significant. So it's, it's, I can only imagine what Lazarus must have smelled like. So for Lazarus to come out of the tomb, now if he'd come out, you know, 10 minutes after he'd been put in, well, well, maybe he wasn't really dead. Maybe he was just, you know, it's a trick or something. But after four days, Jesus called him back to life. That was a pretty good indicator of how powerful Jesus' magic was, that he could raise somebody from the dead, even this man who smelled like death when he emerged. And people began to follow Jesus because of that. Because they had witnessed Lazarus coming back to life, they followed Jesus. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, the powers that be, a little bit nervous about this, that he's getting a bit too much power. Jesus, this Jesus guy's getting a little bit big, big for his britches here. So we know that people were following him because of Lazarus. How much bigger would the power of his own resurrection be? In this passage, as we read it on this Monday of Holy Week, we aren't talking in the passage about Jesus' resurrection, but the fact that we are on the path to the cross this week indicates that we know what's going to happen. We know that come Friday, Jesus is going to hang on the cross. He will be buried in the tomb that Joseph of Arimathea donates for him. He will be wrapped in the cloths. He will be anointed in spices. We also know that come Easter morning, at this, the beginning of the, at the end of the Sabbath, when, when they go back, when Mary and, and the other women go back and he's gone, that will celebrate at the Easter vigil this coming Saturday evening. We know that he was raised from the dead and he did not stink. He did not come out of the tomb like a mummy all wrapped in toilet paper saying, you know, Everybody like, oh, oh, he came out and he was radiant and he looked miraculous. He looked different. He looked like something that they had not anticipated or seen before. What must the Pharisees have been thinking if they were that worried about the power that this Jesus guy would have over raising Lazarus from the dead? How much more power would they be faced with? How many more people would Jesus have following him, following the disciples, when they realized that Jesus was raised himself from the dead? I think that this understanding of how much power he had, how much he was changing the world as we know it, I can't think of one example in this life right now of anyone who has that kind of power that could change the world that much. And that is what we're thinking of when we come to this Holy Week. It is not just another week. This is the week that prepares us for Easter. This is the week that prepares us to recognize that we are the ones who are buried in the tomb. We, because of our sin, have been wrapped up like Lazarus and put, put away. And yet Jesus comes to us and says, no, 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 my child, come out of that tomb, come away from your sin. Unwrap the, the death claws up from your body. Allow yourself to be anointed with healing and love and grace and salvation. That you will no longer stink with the stench of sin, but you will smell like the aroma of eternal life. That is what we are doing as we walk toward the cross. We are walking toward that moment when we acknowledge that we must bury our old selves in the in the tomb so that our new self can be can be resurrected by Jesus so as you go about this week take time to recognize the parts of yourself the recognize that indeed you without Jesus should simply be placed in that tomb because without Jesus we are nothing and then take time to give thanks and to participate in this Holy Week, that when Easter comes, you will truly understand the gravity and the lightness of being at the same time that it is to be create, recreated as a child of God, raised up from the depths of sin and placed back into the, uh, into the realm of creation, not only for now, but forever, freely forgiven, 
freely given salvation in eternity by this man Jesus who goes to the cross for us. Amen. I invite you to turn to page 52 as we share together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, and today we will use the Lenten, uh, the Lenten um, litany, which is on page 121. Lenten litany number 14. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. And the collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son was crucified yet entered into glory, may we, walking in the way of the cross, find it is for us the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to turn back to page. 54, as together we share in the Lord's Prayer, the first printed. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a blessed and gentle Holy Week Monday, and I will see you again tomorrow for Book of Con or our BAS morning prayer for Holy Tuesday. God bless you, everybody.